the Brandywine Valley, what is it all about and where can we find it? Along the banks of the Brandywine Creek, in the mid-Atlantic region of the United States, sits a 350-square-mile area on the rural outskirts of Philadelphia and northern Delaware. Otherwise known as America's garden capital, it is an area well known for its vistas of rolling hills, expansive public gardens, exotic mushrooms, and fine wine. Welcome to Schmancy, the place where we talk all things rich, exclusive, and fancy Schmancy. Today we're spending time in the Brandywine Valley, a place that's not only steeped in horticulture and beautiful landscapes, but also where artistic families like the Wyeths made their debut, and old money families like the DuPonts made their fortunes. Here you will find some of the most elaborate and most pristine estates ever built in the United States. Those not just meant to admire from outside, but those whose gates are wide open, and anyone, including you, can drop by to see just how the old American aristocracy lived in the last few centuries. So without further ado, here are the eight most amazing mansions of the Brandywine Valley. Number 1. The Hagley Museum. Okay, so at this point, we're sure you recognize the Brandywine Valley as DuPont country. But did you know that Hagley is actually where it all started? The 235-acre complex along the Brandywine River, including this magnificent Georgian mansion, is the actual birthplace of the original DuPont Gunpowder Company. Founded by Eleutheria Irene Dupont in 1802, the complex otherwise known as Eleutherian Mills, includes the first Dupont family home in the United States, the Hagley Library, a kitchen garden, the formal gardens, the powder yards complete with a 19th century machine shop and workers' community, stone ruins, and dozens of restored buildings. It all became known as the Hagley Museum in 1957. And if you happen to be in northern Delaware today, it's a must-see. The museum features exhibits and demonstrations relating to the DuPont Company's early start, early industrial technology, early American history, and the history of gunpowder and explosives. At Hagley, you can also treat yourself to a tour of the home, its gardens, and the grounds. Number 2. Winterthur. Approximately 6 miles from Wilmington, Delaware is a 979-acre estate named after the beautiful Swiss town of Winterthur. Built in 1842 and owned by several generations of the wealthy DuPont family, the estate consists of a colossal 175-room Greek revival mansion known as the fifth largest historic home in America. In addition to the mansion, are 60 acres of gardens, a library, multiple farm buildings, farmland, ponds, streams, and acres upon acres of rolling hills, woodland, and trails. The last to inherit the estate was Henry Francis DuPont, a horticulturist who further developed the property's farms and established its formal gardens throughout the mid-20th century. He was also an avid collector of books, Americana furniture, and fine arts. And housing over 70,000 decorative objects, Winterthur became known as the most extensive collection of Americana in the world. By 1951, Henry Francis had dedicated and opened the mansion to the public as a small museum. By 1959, it expanded to accommodate a library housing more than 87,000 books and 800,000 manuscripts, lecture halls, and beautifully decorated period rooms. Today, you can visit the Winterthur Estate for guided tours of the massive DuPont Mansion, its gardens, and walks throughout the woods. Number 3. The Nemours Estate. This French neoclassical mansion on the outskirts of Wilmington, Delaware, was completed in 1910, on a 300-acre plot, and boasts what is known as the largest formal French garden in North America. Constructed by Alfred I. DuPont, a very controversial member of the DuPont family, as a gift to his second wife Alicia, this 77-room mansion showcases paintings from the European masters, and is surrounded by 200 acres of formal French gardens styled after Versailles. On the property, is also a chauffeur's garage, housing an incredible collection of vintage automobiles, manufactured by the DuPont Corporation, as well as a water tower. Owned today by the Nemours Foundation, you can visit any time of the year for touring. However, be sure to mark your calendars for a visit during the spring and summer months, as you absolutely do not want to miss out on the gardens when they're in full bloom. Number 4. Reed House and Gardens. This all-brick home was completed in 1803 by George Reed II, Delaware's first U.S. attorney and the son of one of America's founding fathers. Interestingly enough, it was considered the largest and most sophisticated residence in the state of Delaware at the time. Located in historic downtown Newcastle, the high-style federal mansion consists of 22 rooms within 14,000 square feet of living space. Though his home was not technically riverfront property, he somehow found a way around that. 
As the shining member of Newcastle society that he was, Reed had also purchased the empty lot across the street from his home, and kept it empty to ensure permanent unobstructed views of the Delaware River. Even today, if you visit the city of Newcastle, you'll find that Mr. Reed still gets his way. In 1824, when his late father's property next door was destroyed by fire, instead of rebuilding, he converted the lot into a formal garden. However, due to lack of funds, the gardens were completed after Reed's death in the late 1840s, by William Cooper, the home's second owner. Today, the Reed home is owned by the Historical Society of Delaware, and it stands fully restored in its original splendor. It welcomes visitors year-round for tours of its well-preserved interiors, and lush gardens, as well as exhibits. Number 5. Copeland House. Completed in 1937, this Neo-Georgian mansion with extensive gardens, was the former home of Mr. and Mrs. Lamott DuPont Copeland. In fact, this is the mansion that sits on the widely famous Mount Cuba Center, a botanical garden established by Mrs. DuPont Copeland, producing some of the most spectacular displays of wildflowers among rolling hills, grassland, and forests, as well as a formal garden. Today, the 1,000-plus-acre estate is open to the public for garden tours, classes, or just leisurely strolling through a beautiful natural landscape. Though the restored mansion is amazing to view from the outside, it's the gardens that take center stage here. So don't expect any tours of the mansion, as it currently accommodates the staff at Mount Cuba Center and business operations. However, you can go inside for information on horticulture workshops offered year-round, as well as restrooms and refreshments. Number 6. Amstel House. This is one of Newcastle's oldest surviving colonial buildings. Built in 1738, in the early Georgian style by the town's wealthiest landowner Dr. John Finney, this mansion's history is linked to many of the town's most prominent colonial families. In fact, George Washington attended a high society wedding reception here. Though it appears extremely simple compared to some of the extravagant and opulent styles of some later mansions, for a home in 1730s America, this was the shit. Today, the home is owned and managed by the Newcastle Historical Society. Guided tours of the home and its small garden are offered to the public from April through December. Number 7. The Pierce DuPont House. Just about an hour outside Philadelphia, is the original homestead of the Pierce family, which in 1906 became the weekend home of Pierre Dupont, another prominent member of the Dupont family. The home was built way back in 1730, on a plot we all know today as one of America's premier horticultural displays, Longwood Gardens. It began as a 202-acre farm and Quaker homestead belonging to the Pierce family. But thanks to the extremely wealthy Pierre Dupont and his stewardship during the early 20th century, it became what it is today. 400 acres of lush colorful formal gardens, stunning conservatories, a most significant fountain collection, open meadows, winding paths, breathtaking Brandywine Valley vistas, and one of the great gardens of the world. You can find the colonial-style Pierce DuPont Mansion centrally located within the Longwood Gardens complex. There you can learn about its history, while touring the interiors and adjoining conservatories. Longwood Gardens is open to the public year-round. Be prepared to reserve the entire day or make multiple trips to this massive and absolutely mind-blowing property, as there are an insane amount of areas to see, and plenty to do here. And last, we have number 8. Rockwood Mansion. Completed in 1854 by merchant banker Joseph Shipley, this Wilmington, Delaware mansion is an excellent example of Gothic Revival architecture. Having spent many years in Liverpool, the home reflects Mr. Shipley's love of English architecture and landscape design. The Bringhurst family, descendants of Mr. Shipley, inherited the mansion after his death in 1891. They too added their special touch by incorporating original Victorian furnishings, English and American memorabilia, historic photos, and their extensive clothing collection. Today, the estate known as Rockwood Mansion and Gardens is owned by Newcastle County and is now a museum and park sitting on 72 acres. In addition to the home, it features a conservatory, a porter's lodge, a gardener's cottage, a carriage house for special events, beautiful English gardens, and several walking trails. You can visit the museum for guided or self-guided tours, exhibits, or to just spend a day relaxing in its serene park-like setting. And that's it for the 8 most amazing mansions of the Brandywine Valley. So, which of these did you like the most? Which ones are you adding to your bucket list? Are there any other Brandywine mansions you feel should have made this list? Anyway, if there's anything else you would like to mention about this topic, feel free to share it with us in the comments below.
Furthermore, if you got any value out of this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and click on the bell icon so you never miss out on another video. With that said, we'd like to thank you for watching. And we'll see each other next time.